Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today I'm going to show you some useful tips and tricks to evaluate trigonometric identities using complex numbers. So you might come across instances like this in exam, sine two x, what's that? I don't remember the formula. Or, or how about cosine squared x, what's that? I don't remember the formula for that either. And, and how about sine of x plus y? I, I don't remember. There are two formulas and your instructor just hasn't given you a formula sheet and you had to derive them. How would you do it? Easiest way is the way that I'm going to show you. So let's get started. Of course, it's going to rely on Euler's identity e to the ix is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. And you can also show that this tells you if you add and subtract it, that uh, cosine x is equal to 1 half e to the i x plus e to the minus i x, and sine x is equal to 1 over 2 i e to the i x minus e to the minus i x. Do this by adding and subtracting the equations from each other respectively. So if, if I want, you know, e to the i x plus e to the i x, I would just I would just start by evaluating that so that it's equal to twice the cosine and do the same thing and take e to the i and i x and subtract e to the minus i x from it. You'll see that it's equal to two i sine of, of two x using Euler's formula. Going from there. But that's just review. I assume that you already know how to do that before this video gets started. The new part is to show how to use Euler's formula to evaluate things like this. So let's do that. Okay. Let's start by we came across cosine 2x or sine 2x on an exam and you didn't remember which formula was which. So we're going to start by considering the complex exponential that this is the real and imaginary part of. So we're going to consider e to the 2ix. And obviously, this is just equal to cosine 2x plus i sine 2x. And if we find the real and imaginary parts of this top expression, we'll also find the parts for the bottom expression. So that's all that we have to do. By the properties of exponentiation, this is equal to e to the ix squared, which allows us to use Euler's formula. Square that bad boy now. It's equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x plus our complex part. We have two sine x cosine x, and there you have it, we're done. So this is actually cosine 2x. This is actually sine 2x. I don't think there exists a faster and easier method to derive these equations. If you find one, definitely let me know. And as you might be aware, this is actually just a special case of the addition formula. You know, cosine x plus y and sine x plus y, which also appear on the exam. And we note that it's a a special case of uh, cosine x plus x is cosine of 2x here. That's what we derived up here, just a special case of the addition formula. So we want to derive those as well. Thankfully, they're pretty easy using the same method, just a bit, just a bit more abstract. So now we're going to consider e to the i x plus y. Of course, this is going to be cosine um, x plus y. Plus i sine of x plus y. That's why we're considering it, of course. But that's not really part of the derivation. You have to keep this in your head in advance, which you would in an exam anyways. It's equal to e to the i x e to the i y by the properties of exponentiation. No, it's the same above um, if x is equal to y. So that's how this generalizes. Using it twice here, Euler's formula that is, this is cosine x plus i sine x and cosine y plus i sine y. 
using the FOIL method. This is just equal to cosine x, cosine y, plus imaginary term, the imaginary term, real term, uh, minus sine x, sine y. Now we have the imaginary term. Okay, this one, this one, cosine x, sine y. We did, we did that, now we need this, plus sine x, cosine y, and we're done. Since this is just cosine x plus y, and this is just sine of x plus y. Feel free to check it, I hope I got it right. If not, it's pretty much what you do here, so you can definitely prove me wrong in the comments. Okay, so this is about the only identity that you can derive by considering the complex exponential itself. Since these are the only identities that are linear in the arguments, there are many other identities that you need as well that are not linear. So let's discuss how you would derive those. As you can probably guess, we're going to use the second method where we write out sine and cosine directly in terms of the complex exponentials with the appropriate factors of 2 and i, of course, and go from there. As you've seen already, these derivations are much easier than other derivations you've seen because we can use the properties of ex exponentials, whereas with other non-complex identities, we'd have to rely on other trigonometric identities to derive the ones that we're trying to discuss. All right, so now we want to evaluate cosine squared x. Why? Well, what if we had the integral of cosine squared x in the exam? For some reason, you had to integrate it. Well, it'd be much easier to, to use the identity, which we're going to show, 1 half of uh, 1 plus cosine 2x and integrate it directly. So yeah, this is what we want to show. There's also a similar identity for the sine function, which we'll derive shortly, but this is the primary reason that I had to use this identity, though of course there are many other reasons that you might have to use it as well. All right. So we're going to write this as one half e to the ix plus e to the minus ix squared. We're going to get two factors of one half, which we're not going to combine into one fourth for reasons that you're going to see momentarily. Using the FOIL method, we're going to have e to the 2ix uh, plus 2 times the middle term, which is just 2, since e to the ix, e to the minus ix is equal to 1, of course, plus um, e to the minus 2ix, which we're going to simplify now as follows. Going to take one of the one halves and distribute it through. So it becomes one half. We're going to put the constant up front. We have one plus e to the 2ix plus e to the minus 2ix divided by 2. And you can see where we're going here now. This last term is just the cosine of 2x. So it becomes 1 plus cosine 2x over 2, exactly as I told you it was. Excellent, it's great, but because we did not consider the complex exponential at the beginning, we have to do a similar derivation twice for the sine function. So let's, let's do that now. Sine squared of x is equal to 1 over 2i, e to the ix minus e to the minus ix, everything squared. So i squared is equal to minus 1, of course, so we're going to get minus 1 quarter, which we'll write like this, minus 1 half times 1 half. And now distributing, squaring rather, so we have e to the 2ix again, we have minus 2 plus e to the minus 2ix. And now we're going to take the minus a half, distribute it through and keep the plus a half up front. 1 half, and we're going to put the constant up front, so it becomes 1, 1 half times 2 is 1, of course, and that's going to be minus, not cosine yet, not cosine yet, e to the 2ix plus e to the minus 2ix over 2, which is just simply 1 minus cosine 
2x over 2. Incidentally, there is another way to recall these as well. I always check it for the value at 0. I know that if I, if I square a cosine over a sine, it's going to involve 1 and cosine 2x and 2. So if I want to know which one is which, I plug in the limits. Since cosine squared of 0 should be 1, and if I plug 0 into here, I get 1 plus cosine 0 is 1 over 2. 1 plus 1 equals 1, of course. So I know that this one has to be cosine of 2x, and the other one, <coughs> excuse me, has to be sine squared of x. So yeah, that's how you can do that. And it doesn't have to stop here. You can apply the same principles to derive many other identities, like uh, sine squared of x plus cosine squared x equals to 1. It can be derived in much the similar fashion that we have done here. You just put the Euler formula versions of sine and cosine. I don't really feel that this identity fat, fat the topic of the video, since I can always remember this one. I think everyone remembers this one. There are also things like if you wanted to know about sine of pi over 2 minus x, for example, is this cosine x? I don't remember. So this would, this would be a good one as well to use the Euler formulae on. I didn't include it because it's not quite as famous. But these are the main ones that you need. And feel free to apply this method to derive any other trick identity that you want. And if you want to see some more math, please like, subscribe to my channel. See you next time.